Hello. Today, I'm going to be teaching you how to defend against some of the most annoying and the most common traps that you can come up against in chess, including the four move checkmate or wayward queen attack, the blackburn shilling, the England gambit trap, and the fried liver. Let's go. So, let's start off with probably the worst one, the four move checkmate, which has taken m far too many victims out of eight year olds over the time. So, let's go. E4, E5, and then your opponent goes and plays the move Queen H5 like a madman. Well, my main tip for defending stuff like this is j you always have to think, what is my opponent threatening? For instance, here, a lot of players will play something like G6, but this is actually disastrous, because after the move Queen takes E5, not only has White won a pawn, but it's also a fork of the King and the Rook. So after something like Knight E7 and Queen takes H8, White ends up up a full Rook and a pawn. However, it, this can easily be prevented with a move such as knight to c6. You're defending the e5 pawn and therefore white has nothing to do. So a lot of people will try the move bishop to c4. Again, what is white threatening? Well, he's threatening the move queen takes f7. So don't play a move like knight f6 because that allows you to get checkmated. Instead, something like g6 forces the queen to retreat and blocks it from the f7 square. So, after queen f3, again, what is white threatening? Just because the queen's gone back, it doesn't mean that it's not still threatening something. And again, queen takes f7 is targeted. So, this can easily be stopped with a move such as knight f6, blocking the queen's path. And all of a sudden, black has a much superior position, because he has two knights out, whereas white only has a bishop out and an exposed queen. In addition to this, black is also ready to develop this bishop and castle. So, now that we've looked at how to defend the four-move checkmate, let's move on to our next example. Here we have the infamous fried liver. The fried liver arises after e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, knight f6, and knight g5. Again, what is white threatening? White wants to play the move knight takes f7 with a fork of the queen and the rook. What a lot of players will do here is they'll play the move queen e7 because they'll think, well, I'm defending f7, right? So it's fine. Wrong. After, such a, after white takes on f7 with either piece, so let's say the bishop because this forces the king to move, you can't take on f7 because you'd be giving up a queen for a minor piece. Just because you're defending it doesn't mean that it's okay. So what can you do? Because you don't have another way to defend this square. Well, luckily for black, you have the move d5. Well, doesn't this lose a pawn, right? The white can just take it. Well, it's more interesting than that. After the move knight to a5 and bishop to b5 check, black has two good options. The first and the most common by far is the move c6. The other one is the move bishop to d7. I'm going to be showing the move bishop to d7 today because c6 is much more common, as I said, and therefore people with white will know what they're doing much more. After bishop d7, most players with white will have not seen this before. So, let's look at it. If white takes on d7, this is, a this is a mistake, because after queen takes d7, not only does black have one, two pieces out, in, in contrast with white's one piece out, but he also is ready to develop his bishop and castle in either direction, and white's d5 pawn is very weak. In exchange for this, white only has one pawn, which, is, by the way, is going to be very hard to, to defend. So, what white should do instead is the move queen to e2. The point is, if you take... White takes and gains a tempo. He doesn't win the knight because c6 allows the queen to defend. However, what black should do instead here is move bishop to, d bishop to e7 or bishop to d6. Simply developing and after normal moves such as knight f3, castles and castles. Black has a very strong position. Say c6 takes, takes. Now let's move on to the blackburn shilling trap. The Blackburn Shilling Trap arises after the moves e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, and the surprising move knight to d4. If you don't know what you're doing, this is probably the most embarrassing out of the four that I'm showing today. Let's look at why. After knight takes e5, black plays the move queen to g5. And here, most people with white who haven't seen this before will play the move knight takes f7 thinking, well, I have a fork. This ends up disastrously going badly. 
After Black plays the move Queen takes G2, you realize, okay, well, I have to save my Rook, right? So Rook F1. But now Black plays the move Queen takes E4. And this is where it gets ugly. Well, you'd love to defend with the Queen, but unfortunately, you'd lose your Queen. So the only other option is the move Bishop to E2. But then, but then they checkmate you. And it's the seventh move of the game. And this is the moment where you storm out of the playing hall of the tournament and decide that chess is a game of luck and you are quitting it and you're going to become a professional stratego player instead. Or you watch the video and you learnt that this can all be very easily avoided by playing the move knight takes d4. Now, sure, you're not winning a pawn, but it's just so much simpler and your advantage is actually going to be more than if you had simply won a pawn. Let's see. After the move e takes d4, white simply castles. And all of a sudden, we realize why white is so much better. Firstly, white has better control of the center. He has a bishop out, whereas, white, whereas black has nothing developed. And he has castled his king. After, say, knight f6, rook e1, d6, c3, takes, take, knight, knight takes, bishop e7, and d4. Sure, black isn't immediately lost, but let's be real. Who would you rather be in this position? White has a dominating center and is still more developed and therefore has a clear advantage. Let's move on to our final example of the day. This is the England Gambit trap. So this is for you d4 players out there. After d4, you'll occasionally see the move e5. The point of this move is that after d takes e5 and knight c6, black is basically going to try and win back the pawn at all costs. However, this can become problematic. After something like knight f3 and queen e7 and bishop to f4, most players will play the move queen to b4. The idea is this is a fork. However, it's a fake fork. <laughs> because bishop to d2 saves the bishop and you're no longer in check. Do not play the move queen to d2 thinking that this is also okay because you're defending the bishop because now after queen takes b2, you have no good way to defend the rook. If you do get into this situation, it would be even worse to play the move queen to c3, because then black plays the move bishop to b4 and wins your queen, and, and the rook after that. Again, try checkers in that kind of scenario. However, after bishop d2 and queen takes b2, the whole point of the trap is that people who, ha who don't know what they're doing will often think that the move bishop c3 is very strong. However, black plays the move bishop to b4. Just because you're attacking the queen and defending the rook, it doesn't matter because the bishop is now pinned to your king and you can't move it. Now, people will think, well, I can't take because then I will lose this rook, so I have to defend the bishop. And this is when they play the move queen to d2, and it only gets worse from here. After bishop takes c3, if you take with a knight, well, you lose your rook, so the only other option is to take with the queen, right? And here again, queen takes c queen to c1 is checkmate, and it's only the eighth move of the game. Um, and yeah, we can go back to our scenario of you storming out of the tournament hall, deciding that you don't like chess after all. Or, as I said, you can play the move knight to c3 instead of bishop to c3, because now the queen defends the rook. In this position, people will most likely try the move bishop to b4. And here, this is the one move that you need to remember. Rook to b1. It doesn't matter that they're threatening to take this because you're threatening the queen, and the queen is much more valuable than a piece. So, most likely, they will have to move the queen, and then there are many options. Even, such, even something like rook b3 is perfectly fine. I should add that Amman Hamilton, who, you, who some of you may know, has experimented with the idea queen takes c3, sacrificing the queen for two minor pieces and a pawn. However, ultimately, while it is a nice idea, it's not, good, it's not particularly playable for black because the queen is simply going to dominate after white gets organized. That concludes the examples that I'm going to be showing you, that I have been showing you today. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please do consider subscribing, leaving a like, commenting maybe some other traps which you'd like me to cover, or and I'll definitely reply if you do.
also because I got like four comments in the last video, so it doesn't really, so it's not like I'm going to have my work cut out. Um, as I said, thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day.